For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. In ancient Greece, every year, 500 people would be selected from that Grecian society, and they would have to sit there that year, and they would propose laws, and everyone else would vote on them. Now, if you're in that position, right, you're called up, what rules and laws are you instigating? You might go, right, I, I, want, uh, I want an egalitarian society. I want freedom for people. I don't want slavery. I don't want any sort of oppression. Would that be high on your list? Well, you could say, you know, when I worked at Cordon Bleu, there was times when I thought being treated like a slave here. Mm. Mm. You, you weren't, though, because yeah, you were being paid, paid and you were free. So, well, what what do you mean? I wasn't free. I was on light from, from nine till six. Yeah, you had the choice to leave the job. Slaves didn't have a choice to leave. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, you did, The only yeah. other choice was Tesco, and they'd already turned me down. No, that's not... That's not that <laughs> wasn't no the, choice. That, that's wasn't why, the, yeah. that wasn't the lack of choice given to most but the slaves. But the slaves who built the pyramids, that wasn't an option for them. It wasn't like they could no. go, and, well, I, I could uh, get a better gig on the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying... No, you're not saying anything. You're saying... Absolute drivel again. Um, Here's a little Greek proverb for you. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. What do you think of that? Do you understand? Yeah. Just saying, uh, they're planting a seed, they grow a tree, but a trees take ages. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. That old fella's not going to get any joy out of that. Right. But if he's lucky, yeah. the fella next door might have done the same years ago. So it's all about sort of planting a seed, looking after each other. That's great, actually. It's not. I don't think it's directly it's what almost, it means. It's almost the point. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I, I think he means that future generations. But yeah, if the, if future, yeah, the, if the next door neighbour had done that, then uh, yeah, that works as well. But that's. Yeah. But you seem to agree that that's a good point. Do you agree that seems a good point to you? Um, but I'm I'm sort of guessing. He, he enjoyed gardening anyway. Part of the enjoyment was him planting that seed. Oh, we, we should you, have... It's the old metaphor problem again, isn't I know, it? Yeah. It's not specifically about trees. But, but, but as a metaphor, what he enjoyed is the fact that he's added to society and human life and he's got a legacy and all that. But so. by the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right, well, there they have motorbikes, people flying around on them, P people don't wear helmets. You might even get three people on a moped. I saw a farmer with a goat in a basket. They don't care. They're whizzing around at high speeds. A lot of deaths there. Yeah. Um, and they'll have a lot of them, them seat, there, those areas where someone's come off, been killed, people put flowers there. Yeah. And because that happens a lot, it's a lovely green island. Now here, we're saying whoa, 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 where an elbow. You're saying what? that all the deaths make it nice because there's makes flowers. It makes it lovely. Because there's loads of flowers everywhere. So with mm. death comes beauty. So that's another metaphor. You can have that one. <laughs> that was one of the most now, tortuous things I've ever... That was extraordinary. But look look at London. That was extraordinary, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. Carl. Well, look so, at London, though. Let me finish point. my point. Let him finish his point. Let yeah, him finish his point. I'm intrigued. Right. London, a councillor with his clipboard, need a speed bump here. I saw someone doing 35. Put some traffic lights there and a pedestrian crossing. Mm. Pelican crossing there as well. And a speed camera. Right. Horrible and grey. Okay. No flowers. But you still see flowers left behind where people have died in terrible accidents. They're not you very see good that all ones. They stuck to a lamppost with elastic band round them. <laughs> they don't look nice. <laughs> He's not in the quality of flowers. Yeah, but the point wow. is this. The one is Some 15-year-old got run down and you're disappointed <laughs> at the quality of the flowers. Look at this, Suzanne. <laughs> fella lost his head here. Geraniums? So Geraniums for fella lost bloody head. Well, Fuck that's so we have to, we have to encourage that, gun crime so that people will get shot in inner cities and then we can put flowers up and beautify the area. Is that no, what you're but saying? If an area's nicer to look in, nicer to be in, if it's nicer looking, um, you don't get people speeding around like lunatics. 
because they go, I don't, I'm not in a rush. I'd quite like to slow down. This there is and look so at the flowers. complicated. So now what you're saying is because an area is grey and gloomy, people speed around to get out of it. In the course of doing that, they knock people down. But then flowers are put up, which makes the area beautiful, thus stopping people driving around at speed so deaths no longer occur. Well, they're here to get out of their cars to, to put down flowers. <laughs> they get knocked down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, other people on their way to put some flowers down. Yeah. Just sometimes people have to die, don't they? There was a fella outside our house who had a lamp post. He had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh at a man's head coming off because no, the way you said it. But, but that's the <laughs> thing. <laughs> he had a... He, he had a... Oh, God! There's a man. Yeah. It's right here in the house. He had a lamppost, <laughs> he had a helmet on, but his head come off. <laughs> so you're saying that because in that one instance, the helmet did not save his life... His head was in great condition. It's just not attached <laughs> to his body. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying to you. Sometimes people have to die. How far, how far do you take all this stuff of, of, you know, safety gear and slowing down and wear bright clothes at night? And It's just too much. Very important point, you see. Do you think someone should be made to wear a crash helmet? They're only hurting themselves. Uh, crash helmet. I don't think you should get fined for not wearing one. Well, don't forget, we're not just protecting him. He could be a father with two kids. So you're going, oh, let him up there if he doesn't want to work crash. I mean, let him, let him get brain damage. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, we're, we're over the top in this country. No, but you, so you're saying, sort of if thing. you're saying, no, if he doesn't want to work crash helmet, let him not wear a crash helmet. He smacks his head in. He's a vegetable. He's like that, I'm sitting at home, like that. And yet the two little kids come to you. You're in charge, don't forget. We've put you in charge of society here. And they come to you, two little kids, they go, President Pilkington, what? why did you let my daddy wear the... Why not wear the crash helmet? I didn't. We paid, uh, we put leaflets through the door. We had yeah. adverts on the telly sun showing. Yeah, but, but why? It's your dad's fault. But why wasn't it compulsory? Because he wanted... It's, it's not the world we live in, Sonny. Yeah, he's, now I haven't got a daddy. Has he got an helmet at all? Have you seen he's, an he's, helmet knocking about? No, he's, 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 he's a vegetable uh, now. Yeah. yeah, he didn't want to wear a crash helmet, but why didn't you make him wear a crash helmet? It wasn't just him, it was us. Oh, why, did, why did you turn my daddy into a vegetable? Where's your mum? Mum, mum, mum left when you kept, you kept going on about not wearing a crash helmet. Right, she... I'm going to put you in a hole. <laughs> I just think, you see, this is the problem. Everyone's looking for someone to blame. Yes, but this is interesting, though, because you, you were particularly callous to that little four-year-old boy who seemed yeah. so sweet and adorable. Yeah. But why wasn't he giving this stick to his dad? Well, his, his dad's, dad's dead, a vegetable. He's, a vegetable. he's dead. Uh, he's good as dead to him. His dad went within the law. It was not the law to wear a crash helmet anymore because you said, forget it, I don't want a nanny state. I don't want... If you wear a crash helmet or not, he wasn't a responsible parent. He hadn't thought it through. But this is your job. Some people aren't responsible. Society keeps them in tr on track. This was your... You were in charge. You should have made him wear a crash helmet. He had two kids. We've heard from one of the kids. What's the other one's attitude? Is he, is he he's young? A bit, he's a bit younger. Is he even younger still? Yeah. President Pilkington, oh. my brother's crying now. She was shouting at him. I wish you'd have made my daddy wear a crash helmet. Why didn't you make your daddy wear a crash helmet? Well, he wouldn't listen to me because I'm not in charge of society. He didn't listen to me. Yeah, it seems like a bit of a, a numb nut, to be no, honest. No, he did listen to you. What did he do you for a living? Because you made a new rule saying people don't right. have to wear crash helmets. Right. What, and he listened what, what, to you. Did he, did he pop shoes on in the morning when he went out? Or did yeah. he need to be here to tell him to do that as well? well? No, there's certain things Oh, so he has got do. some common sense then? Well, there's nothing. Yeah. Oh, right, interesting. Yeah. So he can be bothered with his trainers, well, but he can be bothered with helmets. Oh, I haven't got a daddy. Jesus. <laughs> Why can't they just put a leaflet through saying, hello everyone, use your common sense? <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm asking. Because, That's what I take Because some people don't have common sense. Some Everyone's people, got common sense. Some people are fucking idiots. Yeah, well, they should, it's not my fault that's then. Why yeah, that's not why there fault. is a government. If we let, if we let people, well, they'd be fucking idiots. Well, it's what we've talked about here, social responsibility. This is your approach. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Yeah, I don't, I don't that the people who don't wear an helmet sort of they do themselves in and that's cleared them off that's one problem sorted so you think you, you're, you're being darwinian you're thinking survival of the fittest the yeah. idiots will suit but they don't because it they're not just the victims the dead person isn't the victim we've talked about it before you know people who smoke know that it's dangerous <laughs> but why is that still legal and yet people know that and they still smoke fat people know that they're going to get out of breath and clammy 
and yet they still eat more. But because that's what I'm saying. Why don't we stop fat people eating? If you've got a smackhead and you really love him, you intervene, you grab him, you put him in a cupboard, you go, you're not coming out. He goes mad for about a year, then he yeah. thanks you for it. Yeah. So block fat people in the cupboard. And you just put carrots under the door. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's got to be some responsibility. Now, if it's your own fat kid, stick him in your cupboard. But what I'm saying is, as a counsellor, I'm not spending taxpayers' money on cupboards to put the fat kid in. <laughs> Obviously, in China, you can only have uh, one child, can't you? Is that something you feel we should bring in here? Uh, yeah, I think we, we've got to... Um, I don't know about one kid. I, I just sort of concentrate on who can have a kid. OK. As opposed to, you know, if someone's got a load of money and they're good at looking after kids, let Madonna have as many as she wants. Mm -hmm. but someone who's, oh, yeah, but then... So but social then, engineering you want to yeah, do? Yeah, but then... But hold on, though. Well, what use are they, then? If you're bringing them into a poor family, what's the point? What good is that for anyone? It's not good for the people who've had the kids. So not who's deciding and who's thing. allowed to have how many kids? Yeah, Are you deciding? I, I was I was uh, brought into the poor family, wasn't I? What? I was brought into a poor family. No, no, I'm talking. I'm talking really poor. So, third world? No. Well, poorer than that. Poorer than no money at all. I just mean like the people who I've told you about on the estate sometimes who had that one who chased cars and stuff. <laughs> he wasn't happy. They didn't care if he was there or not. What's the point? Right. <laughs> like, so hang on. So let's imagine so, that Ricky and I, our husband and wife, we've come in, right? What's your questions to us to establish whether we were allowed to have a couple of kids? Hello. Hello. Thanks, um, for, thanks for coming. Um, me and my husband, um, we, we can't have children. Why not? Um, because uh, he's he's got no sperm at all. Okay. He had one sperm and it was it was t ridiculous. It was awful. It just came out like a dead anchovy. Right. And the, uh, you meant to have three hundred million tiny ones, and he had one big one. It was horrible. I had to pull it out. It was like a leech. And uh, and also, I, uh, it was no. I haven't, I haven't got a vagina, so it was no. Place Completely to put smooth down there, like an action man. Yeah, it was just like I don't know. Uh, but we we love children, and um, uh, 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 we wondered if we we could um, have a child. What do you do for a living? What, what do you do? What's your work? Uh, I'm a rapist. <laughs> right. Who do I dispose of the bodies? Right. Uh, well, fill out this Sorry. form. I should have clarified. A rapist murderer. Right. Yeah. Fill out the form. Yeah. He does it in the wrong order as well, I must yeah. say. So, uh, no, number of times I've disposed of the bodies and I haven't made that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just wondered um, what else you need to know about us. We, because even though that I... That was our little joke, by the way. Yeah, he doesn't, well, he doesn't write. Course, 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 I, I, I work, in, uh, work in an office. He works in an office um, in, uh, in, uh, in the town. But, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a housewife. She's I think a housewife. I'm, I'm making a little nest for when we have... Uh, we adopt a little... A little child. We don't earn a great deal of money, but we're good parents. We're we very think, good parents. You know, what's, what's that based on? How, how well, we're good people, on? you know. Mm. I mean, aside from a few naughty jokes, we're God-fearing people. We believe that um, uh, God is watching all of us, and um, we believe in, in the Old Testament. And, and uh, sometimes He tells us to, to kill and rape. Yeah, sometimes He does. Yeah. So we're joking again. We're joking course. again. Or we don't, we, uh, just we don't believe in God. We're um, we're a, a firm and atheist, and believe that our time on Earth is is, is all we have, and then when we die, we become worms meat. Right. Uh, well, you filled up. But we've already we've already painted the back bedroom. That's ready for the little child. We painted it black. Because right. um, we we want our child to be a Satanist. Right. Joking right. again. Little joke joking again. We want, to joke. Be, we want him to be an accountant. Right. Yeah. Um, Gay accountant. <laughs> and there's too much in society where people are pressured to be heterosexual. So we're we're going to try and make ours a homosexual. Right. So you filled out the form. Filled out the form. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll pop that in. Get it processed. Right. Okay, but what kind of questions are you going to ask us? None, none really. No, it's <laughs> just my job. You're happy. You're just happy my job with us. to pass the forms on. We've passed the interview. Because that's the sort of world we live in now. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. God! You've obviously heard of the famous Rosa Parks incident, in which um, she was obliged to move on the bus from where she was sat to somewhere else, and she chose not to, and she was arrested for it. It became very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus, what would you do? Um, and am I far from where I am, I'm getting off? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus, you've still got a number of stops, so you've got to stay on that bus. You've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you. Uh, I'd probably go, it's all right, I'm, I'm 
Standing, I'm all right. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second-class citizens and she can't come with you? Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the, to the shopping centre. We're only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you? Because there's no one sat next to you down here. I'm a bit crammed in up here. There's more blokes than the bus. <laughs> See you in a minute. Carl, let's put this to... to you, I mean, obviously, this is too much for your head to... You're on a bus, right, and there's a few white people, and they're... I'm the driver. And they're being racist to a, a black kid. Right, I'd go... If I'm driving, I'd go... This, lads, stop that, will you? If you're going to be racist, can you get off at the next stop and well, do it there? Well, you know, we've all, we've, we've all had a tough day. It's the end of the day. We just all want to go home. We've all been working. Right. Uh, he's not in your way. He's sat in his own seat. Sit back. Calm down. Have enough. Surely you come... Surely you want to be on the side of right. I'm just doing my job here. I'm sat driving a bus. I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here and getting a load of grief okay. off some people right, at the end of the but day. But think bigger than the bus rule. It's not just a bus thing, all right? Just imagine that you're not a bus driver. All right? No, but think that's what bigger. we're talking about here. But, yes, but Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy, again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what, way. Yeah. That could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies if or to aggression. If, if someone's attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help. You go, no, he, no, oh, I could get her here. Because I know the full story here. But this is what I'm saying what about you Rosie, the story here? Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she sat on the bus. How did it work? I'll she got on the bus, she sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. It was... Uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in a seat, so more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well, no, actually, this is no longer the black section, there is no black section, because there's enough white people, you've got to stand up. Mm -hmm. And she decided, no, I'm not going to get up. It's my right to be able to sit on this bus as a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white. And that was why she got arrested. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, I've, who's, who's been in a right mood, might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's, he's fed up, he's, had, he's up to here with it. Sorry, so she's pissed, pissed up. She's pissed she's, up now. No, no, no the person sat next to her. Yeah. Might have even been a black bloke who's been working hard, and he's like, I don't want this. It's difficult, isn't it? If I was on there, I'd weigh her up. You know, is this woman doing this as, like, a good cause? Or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seemed like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now, that's fine. You'll always get people who do what they want, and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand-up, this is, this is the day I'm going to do it. It's just happened to... She was fed up that day. She didn't want to get up. Lazy. <laughs> she might just go around law-breaking all the time. And she's remembered now because she's, she's made a change about bus seats. But when she got up that morning, did she say, I'm going to do that, or has she been fly-tipping before she got on the bus? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Is she just, is she just a, a, you no, know... No, she's not a troublemaker. She's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights... I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. It's Car yeah. The fact that Carl's managed to find an ambiguity in it I is know. extraordinary. I love it. Tell me something else about Rosie Parks. Oh, for God's oh. sake. I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I didn't realise I had to... I didn't realise it would be this difficult. Um, there was a bit of trouble in our yard the other day. Right. Between... Uh, a wasp and a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, is there any point to this at all, or are you just going to tell us you saw Are you wasp going to a... extrapolate some analogy from this? Uh, I think so. OK, yeah, well, let's, let's see, let's see. So there's a wasp... Yeah, and well, so look at the old scenario. Wasp, so old scenario, right? Okay. As you, as you look, said, sorry, right. just to clarify, as you said, it was kicking off. No, right, OK. Old scenario. So you're looking I'm out your window. No, I'm, I'm in the kitchen by right. the sink. Yeah. I'm washing up the few plates. Right. The kitchen door's open. Right. Suzanne says, oh, my God, look at that. What? There's, a, like, a, a, a wasp and a cricket having a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it before. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Are you sure this wasn't Mexican television and it actually <laughs> was a sporting event? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they're there, wrestling, and I was like, well, stop them then. So stop she... <laughs> You don't interfere with fucking Rosa Parks. Why are you interfering with a wasp and a cricket? Because, one, I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. 
because I've, I've, they, they were sort of wrestling. I said, and my hands were wet, so I couldn't do anything. I, I always overdo it with the fairy liquid. Yeah. So she's she's there. I say, break, separate them. <laughs> now, so she uses a tea towel, flicks and flip. Clever. Right. Good right. thinking. The, the wasp goes its own way. The cricket's sort of jumping about a bit. But um, who was fighting it? So who? I'm sort of saying that is really weird because wasps are changing quicker than anything else that I keep my eye on. Okay, well, that's just your theory, and it's not based on anything. Well, I told you a couple of years back, I saw one eating chicken. They shouldn't right. be doing it. <laughs> so anyway, so now they're causing trouble with a cricket. Whoa, how do you know it was the wasp fault? This is prejudice. Why do you think it was the wasp fault? What, what, what if the cricket would have started it? What if the cricket's got a society that go, we ate wasps, we ate their stripes. We ate them. If they come here, fight them. If everyone comes down here, fight them. How do you know it wasn't the cricket that started that? Well, I suppose at that time I didn't, but since... Oh, subsequent information's oh, come okay. through. Sorry. Okay, so anyway, like Columbo, it? We uh, yeah. so I saw all that, we broke it up, the cricket was sort of shaking a bit. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not! Definitely not! It was shaking a little bit, Yeah. so I sort of prodded it, put a little leaf over it, because it was a hot day, so I put a leaf there so it doesn't get overheated. I love I'll this, like it's Jenna Marathon. It's got a little, it's got Mars on the leaf, written so, on the leaf, but now it's just walking over the little medal. So Suzanne, we, you know, we leave it for a bit. Leave it? On. What about did you say? half an hour, but about, about left it for half an hour. What did Suzanne want to do? She wanted to interfere, did she? she wanted, what did she want to do, just sort of like... No, um, she just sort of said, leave it, stop messing with it. It's probably a little bit knocked out, a little bit stunned. Sure, let's right. get on with our lives, she said. Yeah. So I put the leaf on it, we go off, and half an hour later, I get back in. I'm gonna. I said I'm gonna go and see the Where'd cricket. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Just for a walk. Porch. So I've been out, back in, have a look. Cricket's still there. Noticed one of its legs gone. Oh. Don't know if the wasp did that or the tea towel flick. Right. Well, this is when I got the computer out. Right. Had a look. What happened is the wasp apparently does this a lot. <laughs> And it stings them in the head. Right, not this particular. If there wasn't a like, little profile of this particular wasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of it's just, it's just an incident that just happens a lot happens between wasp, uh, wasps and crickets. Right. right. So it, it stung it in the head, and what happens is it's that whole thing that we talked about before, where it lays an egg. Right. So I was, I was sort of having a look, seeing if I could see any sort of holes in its head, uh, and it just kept sort of moving its one leg, like, oh, I can't, I can't handle this. We've got one big leg. One big leg at the back now. It's normally got two that it uses to jump. So you were worried that crickets aren't aware of the dangers of wasps? I just had a look online and saw that, oh, it's a popular thing that happens. It's sort of like a bit of a mugging. Um, he said you can leave them for about half an hour, they normally come round, and they don't know they've had an egg put in their head. But There's no way... It said leave them for half an hour and they come round, they don't have an egg put in. There's no way it said but that. But it said they, they're normally stunned for about half hour. Have you had an egg put in your head? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ostrich egg, by the way, it's coming out the top. So anyway, so I picked it up, I placed it under a little tree, I said it's in the shade again. Mm, no wasps yeah. can see it there, let's just leave it. Mm. But you've just left that cricket to now die in agony when that mm. maggot goes round his head and comes out a wasp and leaves the carcass. Well, this is when Suzanne came up and said it wasn't moving. I sorted it. You sorted it? You sorted it. What do you, 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 you want to say do? What do you mean? Well, I said, what do you mean you sorted it? She said, oh, Reap it's best that I don't tell you. Right, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, she said she sorted you, it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you think that we're in the Mafia and we're being wiretapped? Say what happened. No, well, she just said she sorted it, and I said, what, sorted what? Because I'd forgotten about it at that point. I was painting. And she right. said the, the cricket. Right, what do you think she meant by sorted it? Well, by the look on her face, the way she said it, I've known her for long enough, so I know that she meant it's not good news. Yeah, so what So what happened? So from that, I took for granted she means... Say it! I've stopped, I've stopped it being... It's no longer in misery. So what do you mean? What? What did she do? She, she crushed its head with a stone. So you've got a tiny head-shaped stone. And Squashed it, because that's where all the action is, isn't it? So she said it was it was too cruel watching it, sort of shaking about with its one leg and stuff. Mm. You had to kill it. I imagine, I have this vision that one day... <laughs> a Suzanne just having to say to his parents, um... <laughs> I'm sorting it. I'm sorting it. <laughs>